The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. Hey there, this is your orchestration tutor, Thomas Goss. Here's a vital tip from 100 More Orchestration Tips about developing some mental habits to help you read instruments that transpose in the key of A. Without giving anything away, this may very well help you if you're entering the upcoming 2022 Orchestration Challenge. When learning to read A instrument parts, develop your recognition of each instrument's transposed registers and concert ranges. If you're an experienced score reader, by now you should have developed a fair recognition of certain transposing instruments. The most common are those in B-flat, typically clarinet and trumpet, and those in F, which include horn and English horn, and even basset horn if you ever score read Richard Strauss or Mozart. Recognizing pitches sounding down a major second or down a perfect fifth should become second nature after a while, and even have a certain simple logic to them. But then we come to instruments in A, which, while rarer, do show up frequently enough to deserve some kind of study. Clarinets in A are common enough in classical and romantic scores, and for their reading alone you should develop some transposition chops, not to mention all the parts scored for bass clarinet in A whether they were played by such an instrument or not. Then the occasional oboe d'amore part will crop up in scores by Debussy, Ravel, Holst, Richard Strauss again, and even once by Mahler. In addition to all these enchanting appearances, there's the extensive use of the instrument by J.S. Bach. But unfortunately for our purposes of transposition, Bach scored out all his d'amore parts in concert pitch, so that doesn't help a lot unless you can find a score that transposes the parts back into something the player can read. Finally, you'll occasionally see parts for A cornet and even A horn. All of these together comprise a selection of instruments in A that deserve better than to have your eye carelessly pass over them without really comprehending their contribution to the score. As to learning to read the transposition, there are no shortcuts, as with the E-flat clarinet, which I'll explain in another tip. You simply have to look at the written pitch and think down a minor third. The best training for this begins with Beethoven's Symphony No. 7 in A major. Clarinets in A are assigned in every movement, including the Allegretto in A minor. It should be a fairly straightforward process to read the parts centered around a written key of C major, and transpose the pitches down to A major. This beautiful passage sits nicely in the key of A major, written up a minor third here in C major. Notice the modulation at the end with written F sharp, sounding D sharp, setting up a move to the key of G, sounding E. After this approach settles in, go on to reading other works in A major with A clarinet, like Mozart's Clarinet Concerto K681, or his Clarinet Quintet K581. As you read along in each work, notice not only how main themes are stated in A major as transposed to C,
but also how the modulation of the concert part relates to the clarinet's written part. If the concert score uses D-sharp to set up a move to the V chord, then the clarinet part will interpret that as an F-sharp in the key of C, and so on. I just mentioned the Mozart Clarinet Concerto a few minutes ago. When you study this piece, make sure to score read the original version for Bassett Clarinet. This is a clarinet pitched in the key of A that has an extended lower range, which goes all the way down to written low C, just like the Bassett horn in F. So that low C sounds low F for the Bassett horn, and sounds low A for Bassett Clarinet in A, both at the bottom of the bass staff. The problem with old published editions of the Mozart Clarinet Concerto is that the Bassett Clarinet was an oddity only played by one specialist, and when it came to disseminating the concerto to the broader world of clarinet players who only had a standard A clarinet, certain passages would have to be adjusted to reflect the loss of the very low notes that Mozart originally scored. But nowadays, many clarinet soloists own Bassett clarinets in A, simply so that they can perform Mozart's concerto in the way it was intended. There are several performances like this uploaded to YouTube, and I've linked one for you in the comments below. Transposing an A part from its written key of C to A major is the easiest way to rethink a part. But what if such a part has accidentals? In that case, apply this simple set of rules. Sharps are sharps in both keys. C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and G sharp in an A part translate in concert pitch to A sharp, B sharp, D sharp, and E sharp. Notes that already transpose to sharps from written naturals in A transposition end up as double sharps, E sharp, A sharp, and B sharp becoming C, F, and G double sharps. Flats equal naturals for the first three flat pitches in the circle of fifths, after which flats are flats in both parts. That is to say, B flat, E flat, and A flat translate as G natural, C natural, and F natural in concert pitch and then any other written flat translates as a concert flat. Here's a reading drill to help you test your transposition of accidentals from A transposition to concert pitch. Not only must you transpose sharps as sharps, but you must also translate flats on the pitches of B, E, and A as naturals, beyond which all flats are flat in both parts. Pause the screen now and quickly copy down these six bars, and then transpose the notes from this original reading in the key of A to sounding in concert pitch a minor third lower. I'll show you the answer at the end of this video. As you may have surmised, those first three flats of B, E, and A when put into a key signature in an A part, transpose into the key of C in concert pitch, essentially cancelling out the key of A in which the instrument is built. You'll occasionally see A clarinets playing in concert C, or rather its relative A minor, especially when the composer is shifting between A major and A minor in a single movement, as with a Beethoven 7th Symphony second movement. Or, a clarinet may play a passage of concert A minor on the way to a key with more sharps like B minor, as in this Mahler excerpt. As a score reader, you should learn to view the occasional A transposition scored in three flats with a sense of relief, as it simply means that the concert pitches will be in plain old C major slash A minor. The low E in this passage gives Mahler the low concert C sharp he needs for a fierce unison gesture doubling bass clarinets, bassoons, 
low horns, violas, and cellos. Everything this video has discussed so far should give you a secure basis from which to score read A parts, mentally transposing them at sight. But that's not quite enough of a process to leave off and say you're done. You also need to transpose the ranges of the instruments from written to concert pitches, so that you know not only what notes are accessible at the extremes of range, but also where the strength of each register lies. Start with soprano instruments, which transpose sounding down a minor third from written parts as we've been studying so far in this tip. Clarinet in A, oboe d'amore, cornet in A, and horn in A. If you're already experienced with these instruments and their more standard models, then you'll see that the written ranges are essentially the same. A clarinet and A cornet, with the same written range as B flat clarinet and B flat cornet. Oboe d'amore, the same as standard oboe minus the low B flat, and A horn, the same as any natural horn crook. Bass register instruments in A are so rare as to be considered functionally obsolete for today's composers, but they still show up in older published scores, so you owe it to yourself to learn their transposed ranges. Bass clarinet in A is shown in both bass clef and treble clef scoring. Horn in A basso appears in the scores of some Italian opera composers like Donizetti and Verdi, and as with horn in A, as previously mentioned, is essentially a natural instrument with a crook. Here's a little trick for reading bass clarinet parts in A, scored in bass clef whenever you run across them in old scores. Just imagine that they're in treble clef, sounding down two octaves. This is the reverse of the E-flat reading trick that I'll cover in another video, hopefully coming soon to this channel. Since the position of pitch names in treble clef is up a third from those in the bass clef, mentally substituting a treble clef reorients the pitches for written bass clarinet in A parts, except that you'll still have to translate some accidentals here and there. Okay, so pencils down for everyone who's working on the transposition challenge from earlier in this video. Have you got your assignment ready? Then here's the answer. Notice how the sharps in the second bar translate from the key of A to concert pitch exactly as predicted. F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp, transposing to concert D sharp, E sharp, and A sharp. And then those same pitch relationships as naturals in both parts further on. Then in the third bar, we see B flat, E flat, and A flat transposed to G natural, C natural, and F natural in concert pitch, reflecting the A instrument's approach to playing the pitches in the key of concert C major. Let's finish this tip with some score reading. The middle movement from the framing music for this video, a concerto for Oboe d'Amore by J.S. Bach, BWV 1055R. This is actually a reconstruction of his harpsichord concerto number four. Unfortunately, the two complete uploads on imslp.org preserve Bach's approach of scoring de more parts in concert pitch, which doesn't help our A transposition training. But here in this video, I've supplied a new engraving of the movement with a de more part in A as it should be scored, for you to read and mentally transpose. Give it a try now, and I'll see you at the end for a few last comments.
I hope you enjoyed our little excursion into the world of A transposition score reading. The main takeaway here is to not feel intimidated by mentally working out concert pitches from transposed parts. When I trained myself to score read orchestral music, I treated every new transposition like an irresistible little treasure to add to my box of skills. First I learned how to transpose B flat and F parts, the most common transpositions. Then I got fascinated by the alto flute and learned how to read in G, and then likewise with the E flat clarinet and alto saxophone, not to mention the D trumpet. Learning to read in A actually came last, but it shouldn't be too hard for you if you just put your mind to it and keep working on it. After a while, it all should click. And speaking of E-flat, I hope to share the sister tip from 100 more orchestration tips on transposing E-flat parts before too long, so keep an eye out for that. See you soon.